boy, do I have a bad habit of picking <laughs> the wrong games and stuff like that. Y'all seen the thumbnail for the preview? <laughs> you know now. But we'll talk about that game at the end. Um, first things first. Um, Delaware, they beat up on St. Francis. I mean, Nolan Henderson, four touchdown passes, a rushing touchdown, three TDs, you know, for Chandler Harbin. And we're talking the FCS playoffs, by the way, if you didn't know. But the Blue Hens, they blew out the red flashes, and they get to go to Brookings to face the number one team in the country, South Dakota State, the number one seed. Um, Fordham and New Hampshire had a war. We're talking Tim the Morat had three touchdowns in this game. We're talking this game was 52-42, but I don't think I expected New Hampshire to put up this amount of points like this. Max Brosmer, three touchdowns. Dylan Lobb, three more rushing on the ground. One of those he caught from Brosmer. And again, the Wildcats had to outduel the Rams. And the Morat got picked off twice. And that was a difference maker in this game. There's also Gardner Webb, Eastern Kentucky, which also a lot of points were scored in this game. But Nari Gaither ran for 245, two touchdowns. Bailey Fisher, three more on the ground. And yeah, Parker McKinney had five touchdowns for the Colonels, but he had a pick in this game. That was the difference. And the running Bulldogs, oh, they ran and ran and ran for over 400 yards, 405 to be exact. So Gardner Webb will get Eastern Kentucky, New Hampshire will get Holy Cross, and then, you know, you know, it, it, it's it's wild because like I don't think anybody expected this to be coming. And then North Dakota State, Weber State, insanity. We're talking. The Wildcats had a 31-7 lead. You know, Josh Davis and Josh Bankston. You know, they all ran for over 250 yards, 251, three touchdowns in this game. And yeah, Tommy Schuster had three touchdowns in this comeback effort but for the fighting hawks it wasn't enough to win it all and the wildcats they get to go back to montana state to play them again oh boy i don't know how this is gonna go man i really don't it's gonna be it's gonna be wild because we were states already angry that they didn't get you know a home playoff game you know like like as a seeded team, you know, they want it to be a seeded team so they could get more playoff games in, but they get the one at the moment. We'll see how it goes when the rest of the bracket, you know, goes down. Going to the other side of the bracket, the game that just ended about an hour, close to an hour ago, Southeast Missouri State, Montana. We're talking Geno Hess and the Red Hawks. You know, Hess had two touchdowns in this game. And the Red Hawks were seemingly looking like they were going to blow out Montana. They were up 24-3. But then the Grizz answered back. 31 unanswered points. Simo didn't even score the rest of the game. Two kick return touchdowns. One of them was like a kick return. One of them was like a punt return, I think. And then Lucas Johnson came into his own in the second half. Two passing touchdowns from him and Montana. They, they beat a team that's over 500. I, I, I have no words. I have no words right now. Let me tell you. I'm just as shocked as you are. You know. Idaho, Southeast Louisiana. You know wild. We're talking Zy Alexander had a late pick six for the Lions. Cephas Johnson had two touchdowns. Sure, Giovanni McCoy had, you know, another costly pick in this game. But he threw the ball to Hayden Hat nine times, you know, and he caught nine catches for 209 yards. You know, Jermaine Jackson also had a 95-yard kick return touchdown in this game. 
and sure enough, a shootout ensued. And yet, Sela survives after Idaho misses a kick late in the game. And Southeast Louisiana gets to go to Sanford, the number six seed. And then, you know, Elon and Furman, again, probably one of the more intriguing games of the first round. It wasn't. Tyler Huff had two touchdowns. The Paladins just ran the ball all over the Phoenix. There was also a fake field goal that got blown up. You know, Elon tried to get a fake field goal, and it did not work. 31-6 there. And then Davidson got shut out, you know, by Richmond. You know, Reese Dinsky, two TD passes. Mylon Howard, another two touchdowns on the ground. And now Richmond gets to go across the country to Sacramento State. Going to be wild. And meanwhile, the SWAC championship. Um, you know, when things got a little rough in some of these other games, I had to turn on the Bayou Classic. And the run game from Southern and the defense in the second half, too much against Grambling. So it it is the game that I think pretty much everybody predicted. Southern versus Grambling in the SWAC title game on the sip of the third. It's gonna be a good one. I, I can guarantee you that. So the second round, it's set. Top half of the bracket for the FCS, Delaware goes to South Dakota State, New Hampshire to Holy Cross. What seems to be another good one. Will New Hampshire knock off their second Patriot League team? We'll find out. Gardner Webb goes to William and Mary. Weber State goes to Montana State. And then in the bottom half of the bracket, you got Montana going to North Dakota State. So two FCS powers meeting up. Sure, one of them's, you know, had more of a down season than the other one has. But still. Two programs that have bad blood against each other. Southeast Louisiana gets to go to Samford. Furman gets to go to Incarnate Word. And we'll talk about that quarterback from Incarnate Word, you know, next week. Oh, boy. Oh, I can't wait. And Richmond gets to go across the country. To Sacramento State, the number two seed. And the SWAC championship again. Southern Jackson State, winner of that. They get North Carolina Central. Should be pretty easy, huh? You think? I think. I think so. So, in any case, I'll see you all in about 15 to 20 minutes or so. We got to talk the big boys in college football. So, I'll see you soon, everybody. <laughs>